and welcome back. Let's now talk about C arrays. So arrays are similar to what you've probably seen in Java. You declare them by saying what the type it is and how many you want. So here the first line says int ar of two says, I want two integers side to side. The most important thing you understand about arrays is that it's a way of asking C for a contiguous block of memory. I need to have two integers side by side. You can't have them here with a gap in the middle. You have to have them together. Um, you can also declare and initialize them at the same time without saying the space. So uh, ar open square bracket open close square bracket equals two numbers um, initializes those two spots and says there's going to be two of them. And the way you access them is the square bracket notation you've seen from Python and from Java, ar of num, where num is some value. And it's zero index. It's really important. So mostly arrays and pointers are Id identical, actually. They're mostly the same. Uh, so if I say care star string or care string open square bracket, the first says the string uh, is a pointer to a character array, uh, to a I even say character array. Um, and the second says that string is an array. So first is string is a pointer to a contiguous block of characters. And the second is that string is a character array. They're nearly identical. Um, people often almost the same, uh, almost always even confuse them in the way they describe them. What's different is that you cannot increment uh, an array. The open square bracket, you can't increment it. You can't move the pointer. You can for the pointer, but you can't this. So if you have a big array and you're moving across, you can't increment it if you have open square bracket. That's really the only, it's very subtle. The way you declare, declare a filled array, you'll only do it with the guy on the right, not on the guy on the left. Um, but you can think of it as an array variable points to the first element. I mean, there's, they're also subtle in some other ways of where they're stored, and I'll talk about that in a second, but that's the big idea, okay? So mostly they're the same, mostly they're the same. What that means is if you have AR uh, and it's an array variable, but it looks like a pointer in most respects. So you can say AR of zero. You can also say star AR. So remember AR was declared as an array. You can still say star AR. Uh, you can also say AR of zero. You can say AR of two. You can also say star AR plus two. This is the first time I've shown you pointer arithmetic. And the plus two says, look, whatever AR is pointing to, I don't want that one, the zeroth element. I don't want the next one, that's the first element. Well, it's not the first, it's the one element index. I want the two index element, I want the one two over. So you say, well, Dan, how does it know how wide they are? How, how much to increment the pointer to increment that? Um, it's not inc incrementing the pointer, how, how, how far to go across to get that value. Uh, that's what types are about. That's why you told it what type that, was, that pointer was to, that array was for. Um, they're only, the declared space of an array is only valid, they're temporary, uh, while the scope of that procedure is valid. So here's care star foo, I'm making a new character, I'm making a new subroutine called foo, pretty cool, I'm going to return, I'm going to return uh, a pointer, and then I say character of string of 32, I'm making now some local storage, uh, array of 32, 32 characters calling it string, and I'm going to return that. You're not supposed to do that because that space was only available in that subroutine. So only while foo was alive was that a string available. And the moment foo ends, the system might reuse that, so you don't have access to that. That's a key error. We're gonna mention that many more times, but don't do that. Don't do what we did here in foo. You don't have access to that once the procedure of subroutine returns. I mentioned before there's zero indexed, so if the array size is n, you wanna access zero to n minus one. That's your range of things you can get to. The problem is, <clears throat> this particular slide is talking about a, a style thing. This is really a style thing here. So this, the top line of code looks right. Like, doesn't this look right? Look at it. Int i, ar of 10, for i is 0, less than 10, i++ plus plus looks good, right? Well, the problem is you've written 10. You've kind of hard-coded 10 twice. And what we want to teach you in 61C is not just how C works, but actually good style. And so one of the things we want to... Uh, make sure it inculcate in this class is that you understand that the single source of truth is a valuable thing. That's the reason why Google Drive and Google Documents are so great. You have a single source of truth and 25 people are doing it rather than passing out version final, 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 no version, and oh, version 17, right? crazy. We look back and we ask ourselves, why do we ever do that? Um, same thing here and see, once you realize that you're gonna have 10 hard-coded, you should, the hair in the back of your neck should go up. I should say, you know what, I shouldn't do this. How do I do this better? Well, one way to do it is you say int array size is 10. Before, in ANSI days, before C99, you have to have pound signed array size 10. 
um, pound size de pound sign define array size ten. You have to defi global define this as a as a as a de pound define in a C preprocessor directive. Here int array size equals ten. So int i a of array size. This is a dynamic array. Again, this came from C ninety nine. And now I can say for i equals zero, i is less than array size. Now I only have one ten. If I want to now change it, I want to make it twenty. Now I change it one place. So look at this and you know look well, young Padawan, as you understand the the ways that that the that, that pro tip for how to do this. You want to really have any hard coded value, have it there once. Abstraction. Okay. So use indirection. Indirection can save you a lot of trouble and mean don't have to maintain two copies of 10. Here's the other thing. Arrays don't know when their bounds are being exceeded. This is C. If there's ever a question of whether C checks or something, the answer is always no. <laughs> C doesn't do any of those checks. C says, I'm just going to let you run as fast as you want, because basically I'm going to compile it down to raw machine code. I'm not going to do those checks for you, those sanity checks. Oh, make sure you're between 0 and n minus 1. No, doesn't know that. The other downside is an array doesn't carry with it its, its size. So that's a little bit of a bummer. So if you ever pass an array around, you have to pass the array, and you got to pass the size of the array, um, or at least the number that you're going to be searching up to. You can pass it, you know, an array of size 100 if you only pass 10, and then only think it's actually only 10 long, and it won't go past that. But you you need to kind of pass these two numbers along. Um, there's only one small um, asterisk to it, exception, which is strings, because we've all agreed that zero character is a special way to terminate a string. So if I'm passing a string to you you can keep reading until you get to zero. You don't have to pass the string and the number. Now, you can also write the number, and then you, you know, you'll stop short of that. But strings, you don't have to pass, because we've all agreed that zero is, a, is a, terminate, a null terminator at the end of a string. But every other array, every other array, you have to pass in the array and the size, or at least the size up to you want to be checking. Okay? You're going to see some errors. As you're coding in C, you wouldn't be learning if you weren't finding errors. You know, you know, if you were, you're not learning how to ride a bicycle if you don't scrape your knee once or twice. You got to kind of try. Well, what if I wiggle the wheels? What if I turn really steep? Well, you hurt yourself and you fall. What if I pedal when I'm making it? I did this pedaling while I'm making a turn. Well, all of a sudden the pedal hits the floor. And you, uh, so you got to try all these things to know what the bounds and range is, so that when you get to a dangerous situation, you won't know to do that. You won't do that. So segmentation faults and bus errors are two kinds of errors that you'll see. The idea of, I'll just give you a little quickie, um, a segmentation fault says you're reading and writing to memory you don't have access to. You're reading outside the segment. The segment kind of is a way that you're, your access space. A bus error often means your alignment is wrong. So, you know, you want to talk about word alignment a couple of videos ago. I'm going to read an integer. If your integer pointer doesn't have, if you say, what's the address of that, of that, of, of that integer, if that integer isn't the address, if you look at it in hex, isn't 0, 4, 8, or C, you're not word aligned. Uh, that's in a 32-bit machine. So then if you read an integer, I'm reading an integer, but it's but the actual pointer is 5. Well, the actual, you know, the actual address of that integer is 5. Well, that's not that's not 4, 8, you know, 12, or etc. Not a multiple of 4. So that would be a bus error. Okay. If it's if it's in the space over there, you could have it could be ambiguous where I read it off alignment, but I'm also off the area I'm supposed to be reading. You can have one of the two. One of the two. So those are two uh, ways. If you see those arrows, that's what they mean. Segmentation fault means I'm outside of memory. I have control. The bus error means probably not aligned. I mentioned before point arithmetic, which is um, if you have a pointer to something and you say plus a number. I mentioned star ar plus two goes to the second. Uh, element in that array, however big they are. It just moves over, just strides however big they are. That's what size of was for. Size of was for. So pointer plus n says, well, if it's a pointer to something, um, it adds, here's the thing, size of character is 1. So it's n times the size of character. So it says, I'm going to move that many bytes across to the next guy. So if it's an integer 4, if I say pointer plus 1, a pointer is 1,000, say, pointer is a nice multiple of 4, pointer 1,000, pointer plus 1, uh, this means now the pointer is going to be, if I ask address, it's 1,004. Pointer plus 1 again, it'll be 1,008. So it's moving by the size of that element. So that's why we have to use that. That's why those types are useful, to know how big to move when you say pointer plus or minus. Pointer minus means go backwards, go back in the array. So pointer plus and pointer minus does that. It's kind of a useful thing. So you saw this as review. We saw this a couple of lectures, maybe last lecture. Um, the way you, if I have a subroutine, add 1, and I have y declared outside that scope, and I pass in y, Y is still in, Y is three initially. Add one is not going to affect Y. It's still going to be three after the call to add one. The way you fix it is you pass in the address of Y, and now that pointer can manipulate Y. And when it's all done, Y is now four. That's all review. But how about what if I want to change a pointer? 
So let's look at this code here. Let me pull this out and see if I got this here. Okay, so I've got increment pointer. Increment pointer here. What color am I drawing here? Increment pointer, son of a gun. There, okay. I have increment pointer. What does it do? Well, let's look at it. Let's, let's start here. It's supposed to move the pointer across. So here's A of three. Okay, make a nice filled array. By the way, you can also, I didn't mention this before, you can fill the array and also tell it how big it is, well, as long as they're consistent. That's critical. So 50, 60, 70 in this nice array. I have a pointer Q. We can think of Q and A both point to the beginning of that array. So here's my picture over here indicating that. Then I called increment Q, increment pointer of Q. I really want Q to move over, so I want Q to be here and point to there. That's what I, what I want is for this there to be my Q. Okay, so let's now call this. Well, what would it do? In star P, I pass in the pointer to P. Now P and Q are the same thing, and I say P equals P plus one, and I hope that P that Q increments. Okay. Well, what do you think happens? Let me try this. I'll erase this. Yeah. What happens? Fifty. Doesn't move at all. Why? Same reason as the slide before. You can't change Q without passing its, it's all on three, one, two, three, address. So you pass in Q's address. Well now, what is the type for the increment pointer that's receiving that? It's not a pointer to an int, it's a pointer to a pointer to an int, actually. H, and by the way we call it H as we call this a handle. So it's a pointer to a pointer. H is a handle. So now what gets printed? Let's try it. So now Q, I pass in the address of Q. Now I can change Q, star star H. The way you get to that, the way you dereference that handle is you say star H. This is going to move where Q is, one over. So let's try this. I run this, Q moves one over, and I printf star q. So this is the same. This didn't change down here. The printf didn't change down there. It's just that key thing was different, and that key different was different. I also changed this as well. Okay. So now, same idea. And you're gonna say, well, Dan, look. If I want, what if I have a pointer to a pointer to a pointer? The answer is yes. I'm gonna short circuit you and say you can have a pointer to a pointer to a pointer. Three stars. Pointer to a pointer to a pointer to a pointer. Four stars. You typically don't have more than two stars in the code, and if you have three, either you know what you're doing and it's really complicated code, or you probably don't need to have it. So think about trying to remove that if you can, but it gets more complicated once you have three layers. But people have handles all the time, uh, which is a reasonable thing to do. We'll see you in the next video.